Alrighty, hello everybody. So right now we're gonna do uh, sort of a quick hit uh, bug fix on uh, Houston.pm, and that's gonna also require a little bit of editing, I believe, on the TCMS end. In that, I don't think I'm exposing the actual URL scheme that's being used to uh, access the page to the templating engine, uh, and the way that's what I'm gonna actually need if I'm going to want to fix this uh, mixed content uh, warning when I'm loading remote resources. This is actually a pretty common issue that you'll see on websites. Uh, for example, you can see right now I've got houston.pm.org loaded and I'm right now getting warnings in the uh, console about this mixed content and so forth uh, for these two images, the one uh, for the Perl mongers and the one for uh, Creative Commons because you know we're doing a leeching thing by uh, just referencing their graphics directly rather than uh, having a local copy saved. So what we can do is one of two things. Number one, we can save ourselves a local copy and use that, or we can just change the links uh, using the HTTP uh, scheme properly. And since this is sort of the way the site was before we migrated it, I think I'm going to keep it this way, and it's going to be good to actually have the HTTP scheme available to templates in TCMS. So let's get right into it. So Let's go ahead and make sure we're in the right place. Okay, so we're going to edit uh, server.psgi. So we're gonna go down here to the bottom of the app. And here you can see I'm setting a large number of uh, various uh, things that is going to be provided to me from the environment into the query. This is also where I'm going to actually set the uh, scheme. But I need to, I, I believe it's in the end somewhere, but I don't exactly remember what the key is. So I should probably dump that out. And find out what my scheme actually is. So let's do Oh, I don't actually have Starman on this because uh, this is going to be deployed via uh, Docker. Uh, so what I'll do is I will do, uh, I believe it is docker deploy.sh. I think it's actually pull deploy is what I'll do. So. make sure that this still works now that we've got uh, the uh, build of stuff done and a little bit of changes to the make files. I don't know. I might even uh, still have the um, actual server running. Let me check real quick. Okay, I don't actually have the containers running, so that should do the trick. Okay, so uh, no rule to make target depend. So I need to actually edit my make file to adjust for that really quick. So instead, it's going to be prereq Debian. Yes. Yes. Okay, so. Uh, <sighs> Okay, so that's at the end. So I actually need it to be in the Docker file.build. So that'll be in here. So there's where the make file is. Where's our make? Yeah, so it's not make depend. It's going to be make prereq Okay. Okay, now let's try. Curl is not found. Okay, so I guess I'll have to make sure curl is installed.
Oh, one other thing to mention, uh, in the last video and, uh, sort of in the, uh, Houston.pm meeting last night, you know, we talked a little bit about how, you know, I'm Mr. Testing, right? I've been, you know, a QA for 10 years, uh, plus, and, uh, you know, this project that I've been working on, I still don't have any tests on this, uh, as opposed to like Playwright, which is uh, on CPAN. Generally, I make sure that I write uh, tests before I actually release something to CPAN. And I'm very much a prototyper in that um, until I am sure that a component needs to be stable, I'm not going to uh, spin my wheels and waste a lot of effort on tests when I'm pretty sure whatever the factor uh, of the, the code uh, is not stable yet. Uh, that's just going to add additional work for me, or I'm just going to have to throw something totally away. But to be fair, in most normal development, throwing away code is normal and good. Uh, but you know, as I'm doing this development on my own, I have to be very uh, frugal with my time. So I'm trying to focus all of my efforts right now on making sure that the design is actually going to work for what I want to do with regard to the disintermediation from aggregators and the um, ability to build a brand uh, with your site a lot easier and basically just making it to where it's very, very easy for me to build websites with this. It has to do that more than anything else. There's no other real priority that I have to hit here. And I want to be very sure that I'm hitting that goal the way I want it to before I even worry about trying to make this uh, very solid and robust because uh, I, I definitely don't feel like I'm where I want to be with regard to making this super, super easy uh, to build websites for clients and things like that that uh, allow them to really easily uh, write what they need to. So I think once I get the refactors I've talked about in some of my earlier videos uh, with regard to being able to have uh, posts within posts, being able to have everything really just sort of based on series uh, of posts and having um, very dynamic post types. I think when I get those done, then it's uh, going to be certainly uh, testing is going to need to start to happen. Now, th does that mean that I can't do some testing? No, actually, I, there's a good deal of testing that I probably should do. Uh, the data models themselves are likely going to remain stable going forward uh, and data models will simply be added. So I suspect that... Um, Testing is something I could probably add for those components. I'll probably do some streams here pretty soon about actually adding those tests because uh, certainly uh, a lot of people are unfamiliar with some of these uh, Perl testing techniques and uh, what you can do with fakes, what you can do with um, mocks, what you can do um, with regard to uh, user acceptance level testing using stuff like Playwright, using stuff like Selenium. So uh, hopefully that'll be some interesting videos before too long. Uh, port is already allocated. So what is actually on 5,000 right now? Okay, we have TCMS running. Uh, probably from the last run, I would guess. So let's... Uh... Okay, so let's go ahead and re redo full deploy. Everything should be cached, so it shouldn't take very long. And then we should have uh, TCMS actually running again. Yep, so now it's affectionate black. Oh, one other thing that is worth mentioning uh, that I learned last night about uh, Docker and Podman. Uh, I can actually change uh, some of the stuff that we've been doing with regard to uh, the actual command running. You can see here, uh, the, the command is kind of weird. And that's uh, going to be sort of due to well, what is actually in the Docker file, not for build, but for run. You can see right here I'm doing CMD, and basically I would need to make this all one string if I wanted it to work like that. Uh, but what I actually should do instead is like in the base.sh, you can see here we've got entry point, right? So 
that's uh, more of what I'm going to actually want to do. I'm going to want it to be uh, very much this sort of arrayified thing, and then uh, I'll actually have the argument that's uh, put there. So what we'll do is entry point. Then go ahead and. run, I believe, just server.psgi. That should do the trick. And it probably needs to be streamified. Let me check. Probably can't run. Anyways. Uh, so if I do that, I should be able to have the um, uh, the Docker deploy script not have to actually specify this stuff. Oh, and one other interesting thing to note is the deploy publish uh, here uh, with five, port 5000, port 5000. Uh, publish is actually the thing that matters with regard to actually being able to run on a local system. Uh, the expose thing, which you think might do that, actually does not expose it to the world. Uh, yeah, here you can see, right, uh, the expose. That's not actually necessary uh, for our, our purposes. Actually, what we want is... Um, just the publish because uh, expose only exposes the container to other containers in the same containerized network. Okay, that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, publish publishes the port to the actual hypervisor. So that's what we actually want to do. So instead, let's go ahead and kill our existing container. And let's see if we can let's just make sure, double sure that everything's okay. That should be good. And I th think I don't need to do anything else. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so it claims to be running. Take a look at Docker. Uh, nothing's running, so something bad clearly happened, right? So I want to uh, actually, let's see. So I've got a bunch of images here. Um, let's see about cleaning some of this up. Okay, how about, let's kill that container. It seems like we've got some stuff sort of hanging around. It's not running. Well, how do I get rid of a stop container? Okay. Blah, 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 Docker container prune. Okay, so that's that's what people do. Huh, that didn't help. So So how about Docker system prune? Now it looks like we're cooking with gas. All right, now we've really saved some space. That's good. Okay. So good to know. Let's go ahead and make sure we don't have any images. So. 
let's go ahead and rebuild everything. And then hopefully we can uh, hop into the uh, container and see what, what's going on with it. This is sort of how it goes with development a lot of times in that um, you try to actually get to an issue and you find another issue that gets in the way of your issue and you spend all day actually uh, trying to fix other things that's just getting in the way of you actually investigating and, and fixing some other issues. So, I mean, maybe what I actually need to do is uh, just SSH into my other machine where I can run uh, all this stuff directly. Uh, so that I can actually fix the issue I want to fix. Sometimes that's the answer is to just have a backup plan. And uh, if it looks like investigating Docker is just going to take too long, I'll probably uh, go ahead and end this stream and uh, come back to focus on that. Or I'll, I'll just switch over. So. But yeah, that's... That's another thing to sort of mention is that whenever uh, I'm doing these streams and stuff, it's actually nice in that I'm a lot more productive than I usually am because sort of like the the pressure, even if like nobody's watching the stream, the pressure is still real to actually perform and actually get things done uh, faster than I usually would. So yeah, exactly. See, uh, some I say nobody's watching, but right, somebody is watching. So <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, my brother and business partner over there, Andy. So um, it's quite fun uh, doing it this way to uh, actually get sort of over the inertia that you have normally whenever you're trying to do any kind of work. Uh, when you have people watching you, a lot of people feel very uncomfortable about that because they've got uh, something like an imposter syndrome or something like that. And it, I, that's never been a problem for me. I've always felt like, you know, who cares? I mean, it's it's just work. Nobody kno it knows everything about what they're supposed to be doing. They, it's just, you know, figure out what you got to do and, and go do it. Um, and nobody actually knows. You know, no, no nobody knows until they go through it once or twice. There's always going to be some roadblocks, some kind of bumps. Uh, nothing ever comes without a little bit of struggle, you know what I mean? And so there's no reason to actually get down on yourself uh, and feel like uh, you don't have the expertise within you because you do. It's just a matter of uh, overcoming the barriers uh, to you actually accomplishing something, which is most of it is just persistence. It's just keep going, keep going, keep going. And there's nothing like uh, having somebody uh, looking at you that uh, you know is not really there to you know hurt you or get down on you. Uh, you know they're just here to you know, check it, check out the stream, you know, see how things are going. And even when it, when it's up at work and you have like, uh, literally your boss, you know, breathing down your neck about, uh, any kind of, uh, thing that needs to be get done. For example, like a lot of times I would have, uh, like a big deadline, uh, that I needed to do. Um, uh, one of the times it was like a database migration for a big Jira system that, uh, it had Jira has a really screwed up database thanks to using sort of like H2 as its lower lowest common denominator and basically not using advanced database features of any of the other types of databases that you can use. And uh, its tables are not well normalized. There's all kinds of craziness inside of Jira. Anyways, so I wrote a big database migration script to fix a particular issue. And, you know, the, the pressure you feel is real, right? Whenever you're doing something uh, on production, okay? And, but the fact is, I didn't, I felt nervous, but it was good nervous, right? You know, uh, when you're nervous, um, I found that my best work actually comes out of that. If I'm, if I'm not really nervous, it's because usually I haven't thought it through enough uh, because I don't actually understand the consequences of what, what this could actually be. And that means that my mind hasn't gone through all of the, possible things that could go wrong and already thought ahead about a mitigation plan for what do I do whenever that happens. 
And, you know, the nerves usually is because it's like, well, what if this thing happens and then I have to do the mitigation plan? Well, it means that it's not exactly a full success, but it's not a total disaster either because you had a mitigation plan in place to either roll back to how things were, uh, all those sorts of things. So that works out pretty good when that, whenever you can actually get it done that way. Okay, looks like it's still installing the dependencies and stuff for Debian. So we're almost done. We're at the uh, next to last step. It's making the layers. Okay, now it's going to go ahead and actually turn on the app and make the uh, thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at what images we got. We got two images. Uh, you know, one is a layer on the other. And I, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of how... Docker actually makes you know each layer uh, the size of the other rather than it being a copy on write layer. It's literally an entire full size layer. That means that they're not using some kind of copy on write technology, which I was doing ten years ago with KVM and stuff like that. So I'm not really sure what the the you know major holdup with them is, but I mean it beats the alternative with regard to I mean it's, it's simple. Who cares? Uh, so. Let's go ahead and take a look and see if we actually have anything running. No, we don't. So that means that our, our container actually tried to come up and it died. So let's see uh, uh, how we can enter into a uh, stopped container. Okay. Easy way. I like that sound. Blah, 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 docker, yes, dash A, okay. Okay, so we want to get into this thing, right? Um, I believe it is enter? No, it's not. It's not enter. Let's... Attach. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so it, it just dies again. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at the logs. Okay, bin sh, user bin starman, not found. So it's acting like this uh, stuff is not being interpolated. So maybe what it needs is uh, this actually to be quoted like it was whenever I was passing it as an argument to other stuff. Certainly how it's acting. So let's give that a shot. So do I have anything running? No, I don't. So I'm going to need to look at the logs again. It's this one, right? Maybe it's this other one. If it's the same error, then I know what's going on. Okay. So now it's it's inside of quotes rather than inside of the square. So the brackets just don't seem to work the way that they're advertised. So I'm not sure about all that. I guess I'll just set it as an entry point. And the thing I don't like about that is uh, entry point, whenever I was doing it on Podman last night, it looked like uh, if you do it like this rather than as the array, it won't actually take arguments in the form of CMD. So 
Let's go ahead and uh, bust open the Docker uh, file documentation. Yeah. So let's take a look. We've got, what is it? Not exposed, it's entry point. So executable param one, param one, right? And so it looks like it wants both of them to be in arrays, I think. So let's actually do that. Let's try that. Let's make that one dash p what the heck? Oh. sometimes I need the one to type. Uh we want port, right? Okay. Let's see how this works out. Okay. Okay. So that's good news. It's actually uh, failing to do anything. Uh, we can do See that it actually exists. Okay, so for some reason we don't actually have our uh, dependencies met. I suspect this means that the actual base image is broken in some kind of uh, subtle way here. Uh, do we have where it is? Uh, okay, so prereq Debian should actually do all of that, right? Uh, are we in the right directory? Might not be. One TCMS, the make files there. Oh, we don't actually have the uh, uh, makefile.pl, so that would be the problem. I think that's what it is. Makefile.pl, yes. All right, let's see if that actually installs our CPAN dependencies. So, I think we don't have anything running, do we? Okay, good. So, let's redeploy everything. Okay, so it's back to running all of its stuff and getting all that installed. So I gotta think about something to talk about. Uh, probably should get a little better camera too, because it seems like the lighting is sort of flickering and stuff a little bit, you know. So anyways, um I don't know. I guess I should get cyberpunk thinking about playing it or something. But uh Docker is interesting in that it reminds me a lot of Java and the JRE um, with regard to they were sort of doing containerization before it was cool. And 
sort of the bad rap within the program community that it's got. Uh, I mentioned the, what was it, uh, Enterprise FizzBuzz in the last video. Uh, a lot of it is just, yeah, there's some really bad programmers that know Java, and it's sort of the same with PHP. They're both actually good languages. It's just there have been a lot of people who really don't know what they're doing using the languages, and it resulting in some spectacular explosions and uh, failures. So the fact that almost everything is going to containerization now is actually a testament to the uh, wiseness of their approach. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Do we have everything running? Let's go ahead uh, Docker container logs for Quizzical Goldwasser. I like Goldwasser. That's cool. Okay, I still don't have the HTTP body module. That's irritating. Well, it's in there in the uh, prereq PM, so I am not sure what is going on there. Um, it can't be using the wrong Perl. So let's take a look here. Um, let me rerun full deploy and see what happened with the actual build of the original one. So it adds makefile.pl and prereq Debian. I actually need to see that do something again. So let's go ahead and kill all the containers. that I did to um, kill everything. It was docker system pruned at dash A. Okay, let's get rid of all that and rerun everything. And then watch the logs carefully about what's going on here. But yeah, uh, sort of back to all that. It's interesting how much of programming is like when you're doing your journey as a person, as a programmer personally, uh, it's all like people learned these lessons 10, 20, 30, even 40 years ago. They already knew this stuff at a high level. And it's just you don't see it until you actually get your hands into it. And that's uh, probably one of the reasons why I'm, I'm very much into being a prototyper uh, is because of this sort of um, the reality that you're not going to actually get the lesson until you're deep into it, until you actually feel it on a visceral level, uh, why it is that uh, people decided to adopt these approaches, you know? And so it's like, you know, Java it was made to do this thing because, in fact, it turned out it was the right way. So I saw a lot of things about term read line, but, oh, that that's normal. Uh, that's part of the locale process. Anyways, so when I was making TCMS in the first place, it made me realize a lot of different lessons that people had with regard to knowing about um, how you build documents and that documents sort of all need to be like uh, pieces of document fragments. And I, you know, just chalk it up to not only I should know better, but I actually do know better because that's actually sort of how TCMS works. It's all a bunch of uh, templates and document fragments popped together, but I didn't really take it up another level of abstraction to um, even the data types should not be first class. They should even be abstracted away, right? And so then I thought about, well, that's probably how all the word processors work, isn't it? And yeah, it turns out that's exactly how they work uh, nowadays. I mean, at the start, they worked a lot like TCMS work because uh, that's how you develop any product uh, in practice is, is this whole, whole prototyping uh, way. But um, 
everybody has to learn the lessons the hard way, I think, just because you don't really understand why it's good and you think this time is different and you think I'm going to learn something new. And it, it to be fair, about half the time you actually do learn something new. You do find out that there's some shortcut you could take that makes life a lot better. So, you know, I, I certainly uh, still like the approach despite the fact that, yeah, there's probably a better uh, way out there. And the other half of that is that the other way might be out there, but your mind is not in the position where you could even learn the lesson if you wanted to, in that you're not inside of the idiom. So you can't, you couldn't search, you couldn't make a million search terms until you actually found the thing. You, you would literally need a guru to find it out. Uh, that had, and the only way that they find it out is usually the hard way, and they uh, understand it themselves. So that's sort of going to continue to be a problem in, in basically every single kind of skilled trade is that everybody learns the same lessons over and over again the hard way because uh, unless you really learn from a master, you're just not going to see it, you know. So I didn't see any problems in Make Prereq Debian. I, I don't really know what to do about that. So maybe there's a way in Docker to run a specific build phase again. Well, that's actually fine because this is close to the last step. So let's go ahead and Do what is it? Arg cash rust equals one to debug this stuff. And let's just for grins break this into multiple steps. Correct curl. Actually, I won't even need to cache bust if I just make it explicit. So let's go ahead and do that. Prereq Pearl ran excessively fast. That is very... Uh... Hmm. I wonder how I can get the build log. Docker get build log. Okay, so I'll just cat it into T, basically. All right. Okay. Let's copy that. trying to remember the name, the way to do less with uh, colors. Less that sure. Okay. So, okay. 
Oh, that's tremendously irritating. What an unfortunate thing here. Um, ugh. Disgusting. Okay, fine. I'll just... Yeah, I have to save it inside the image. Oof! Okay. So, we're going to run the build. And then we're going to actually run into the image. Uh, Docker run. Nothing to be done for prereq Pearl. Okay, that makes me think I really need to actually get into my uh, Linux laptop and see what's going on here. Let me grab the IP address here real quick. All right, 86.109. All right. Okay, let me actually push some of these fixes here that I've made so far. Actually, I won't need those. I think correct Debian should exist, right? Uh, Pearl, right? Meek few. Uh, really? Okay, it's it's probably because it's uh, doesn't have the actual phony line. It's just an error made. Okay, let's try that. All right, so that's all that's going on. Okay, that's actually pretty easy to fix. Hit it anyway. Okay, so we should see some actual CPAN action this time. But it's going to go ahead and install everything again. So we got some more time to talk here, boys and girls. Great. Let's see. Let's clean up some tabs here. Okay, so going back to mixed content is actually what we're going to fix today. So 
Rick Debian. CPanim command not found. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, okay. Get rid of cache bust because I clearly don't need that. And we're actually clearly trying to run CPanim now. Okay, so uh, let's get CPan minus. Wait, CPan minus is right there. Uh, oh, because, uh, you know, it's uh, supposed to uh, run this stuff afterwards. Uh, I can't remember how I can tell it to actually run this later. Um, Okay, make target, make other target. Oh, well, that's because it needs to be basically a, a meta target uh, where it's it's running the actual prereq Debian. So what I'll do is I'll make a new phony make target. Uh, let's just call it prereq Debian. And then we'll do... And we'll make this uh, okay. That should be the right order, actually. I believe no correct devs, then correct roll. Okay. And this will just do the apt get. And then we should be good. I think that should do the trick. Yes. Okay, so let's go back and run this again. As you can see, I use DuckDuckGo because I'm a perler and they're a Perl shop. I really should uh, see if I can work with those guys. That, that would be kind of fun. Anyways, um, it's good. Well, actually, especially since a lot of the things I've been thinking about is uh, sort of how search actually influences the world and how it's really like if you're an entrepreneur on the web, if you don't understand how search actually works and that that's actually how people find everything, you're sort of going to get run over. You have to have that... Uh, like stuff that builds search authority. You have to have the metadata that makes it appear, you know, nice and purdy in the search engines. And whenever you do like a paste into some of these rich text, uh, things like Quill, which is sort of the back end for Slack and um, stuff like other chat apps. Um, if you don't have those sort of little niceties ready so that people see good, good previews of your site, uh, it's just not going to work as well. And it's similarly, you know, you need a good sitemap, which I have executed on. Uh, but you also need a lot of other things. And there's like a really good information in the Google Search Console about what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. There's good information in the like Google Search documentation as to what you actually need to do as a webmaster to do the right thing. It's just most people don't consult it at all. You know, it's only uh, sort of like for the illumined, I guess, <laughs> that actually like making money online uh, and make, make these... Uh, business models like uh, drop shipping and um, SEO affiliate marketing who, who actually understand how search engines work so they can get organic traffic and don't have to pay out the nose to Facebook and Instagram and so forth to actually get the traffic coming to their site. So now we're in the prereq Debian phase. We're installing the Debs, and so hopefully after we're done with some of these packages, we're going to actually get our CPAN modules installed. And now I'm thinking about it, you know, just for like general Unix purposes, I should probably make a make all target uh, that will 
uh, do all the right things and make sure that your system is set up correctly and then update the readme IMD on, on how to do all that stuff. So. Yeah, I could probably show you sort of how the uh, Podman and all that stuff works. It's certainly something I could do while I'm waiting here if I have to do it again. Uh, but I'm sort of wanting to see in living color, watch it actually do some CPAN installs. See, is it still raining outside? Looks like it's cleared up, but it uh, still looks pretty gray. So, not a big fan of that. I like it being nice and warm here in Houston. Okay, we're unpacking the modules, so we'll get to CPAN very shortly here, I imagine. All right, we're running CPAN, baby. Okay, things should work at this point. So, uh, just want to make sure that we're actually running when we're done with this. So, um, maybe I, I may want to. Well, it's a little late for that now. Oh, okay. So all I all I did was make the base image. That so that doesn't really matter. Always root on Windows. Okay, let's. Maybe I should learn to spell. Okay, so we've got that dead. Now all we need to do is run the full deploy.sh. We should actually have a running Docker container. Okay, let's. Okay, we're running. Very cool. Okay, so we should be. Yep, yeah, we've got our page. Okay, so TCMS is back up and running with that stuff. So basically the next steps, if I want to actually uh, execute on this mixed content uh, warning page, would be to go ahead and load up some of the stuff uh, from Houston.pm itself so that I can actually do some uh, development against it and uh, make sure that those are fixed. I think I may have the themes loaded up. Let me take a look inside of I think I have the themes there, so I can actually uh, switch to that and then actually fix the issue. So that wouldn't be too big of a deal. But uh, what I want to do right now is I want to hop over, I want to commit my uh, changes and then hop over to Linux, make sure my makefile still works. Because it should work. Just want to make sure. Okay, what do we have here? This all looks good. Okay, I just need to get rid of my dumper inside of a server.psgi. Well, actually, I just won't add it. Because that's going to be uh, useful for actually figuring out this issue. What is in docker deploy.sh that's different? Okay, so I'm I'm just fixing that. Okay. Okay. Okay, and do I need this prereq curl? No, I don't, because I think that should be part of prereq Debian, right? Yes, it is. No, it's not. 
It's running correct debts twice. That's funny. Okay, so let's quit that. And then um, what we'll do is we will rerun it. Run everything, make sure everything actually works. Okay, and while that goes, I can probably uh, take a look at some of this other stuff. But I didn't commit any of it down, so oops. Oopsie poopsie. I guess I just get to talk to you people again. What a tragedy. Absolute tragedy for a just chatting stream, right? <laughs> oh, goodness. Maybe I'll put on a hat. Yeah, that'll help keep me warm. There we go. Now I'm wearing a hat inside because I have absolutely no manners. But it's a lot warmer. And I you know, got a nice neck warmer here of a mask here so good to go I think what are the programming things that I got here to tell you about well I can sort of go over some other issues I kind of want to hit today uh, yeah stopping using the latest and docker tags Certainly for Ubuntu, I probably do want to find out what tags they have. Let's actually do that real quick. Um, see what Ubuntu that we that is the uh, current published latest. What are their tags? So there it is. Twenty one point zero four is what I want. Okay, very cool. And then. Um, Oh yeah, we wanted to do some light YouTube embeds. Uh, there's a new technique for doing that. And then other than that, there's like uh, you, there's new stuff you can do for fav icon handling, uh, which I mean, you know, you expect to see, right? Just you know, normal fav icon stuff. But apparently, there's more stuff you can do to uh, polyfill across various different things. Another thing that uh, other people noticed was um, like the little uh, link UTF-8 there. Uh, that I'm using. Uh, some OSs don't actually have that. Uh, and I'm probably going to have to look into if there is a uh, emoji uh, polyfill library, especially since on a lot of these uh, different uh, uh, posts, you can actually use the little emoji picker that uh, we instituted even before TCMS2 is a thing. Uh, so Certainly going to want to uh, deal with that. Uh, not, other than that, I'll probably do a stream on um, Selenium Remote Driver here pretty soon because I've been sort of uh, ignoring some of the failing tests, blocking the release, and you know, since people <laughs> uh, had to uh, bug me about tests during the uh, you know Houston PM thing, I guess it's time to do a little bit of a testing stream at some point. It'll probably be next week, uh, maybe late next week. I've got some people to visit uh, next week, so. Looks like we're almost done installing the modules. Yeah, it's getting CPAN stuff this time as well, so that's good. That means the make target is uh, corrected and running well, so we should be able to actually uh, execute and run and do all that stuff. I'll probably fail at the end here because I think I failed to kill the uh, Docker image. So yeah, yeah but it's, it's clearly going to be fine. I just want to make sure that all that was good, so let's go ahead and... Okay. Uh, 
accidentally added that stuff to the commit because I habitually do get commit dash A, so. Let's go ahead and fix that. All right, so I've got all that fixed. Um, we can certainly uh, hop over here now real quick. And now I've got it. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that uh, make uh, direct Debian works. Pseudo. Okay, it works good. So uh, everything works on uh, both uh, Docker and on Debian and also on Podman. So I think we're all good there. Um, I think I'm, what I'm going to do now is take a quick break and uh, be back soon. <laughs> 